Hello everybody. So, sous chef have asked me to make the most glorious golden yellow saffron risotto. Risotto alla milanese. I'm going to make it in the classic style with a little bit of bone marrow to set it off at the beginning, although you can leave that out if you prefer. Now, the first unusual ingredient you might notice is that the very, very finely chopped onion is soaking in cold water. You don't have to do this, you can skip this bit if you want, but the idea is to give a flavour of onion that isn't overpowering, that isn't too strong. So after you've soaked it in the cold water for about 10 minutes, all that you do, put it into a cloth like this. I think that's probably enough really. Bring the corners of the cloth together and give it a little squeeze. And then this rinse, this soaked and now rinsed onion is going to impart exactly the right flavor of onion to the whole risotto without overpowering anything. So it's going straight into the cold pan like that. Now, the next ingredient I'm going to turn my attention to is this little uh, quarter of a cup really of warm water into which I'm going to drop my fantastic saffron strands. And the weight for weight, this is more valuable than gold, you know, so it's best to look after it right at the beginning of the recipe. So the onion itself is called il trito. Trito mixed with the butter and bone marrow becomes a sofrito. So this is now the sofrito stage. We are making this into the base for the rest of our ingredients. The really, really vital thing about this part of the process is that the onion absolutely, categorically must not brown. If the onion gets brown, you're throwing the whole lot in the bin and you're starting all the way from the beginning because you'll have ruined the whole dish. The risotto really needs commitment and there are far too many disappointments already in life. Don't bring yourself another one. While that's happening, let's have a look at the second most important ingredient, which is the rice itself. Now, sous chef sells acquerello, which is without question the most amazing rice. So, you know, if you want to make a really special risotto, this is what you've got to go for. So, that's looking good in there. I've reduced the heat a bit because I was slightly worried that my onion was starting to brown. Now, in this pot here, I have my stock. So I've used the veal stock concentrate from sous chef and I've added to it all the bits and pieces from all the vegetables that I've prepped and I've added in the rest of the bone marrow. See, I took out my teaspoon and the rest of it I've popped back into the stock. But now, the bone marrow has melted down. The onion is looking lovely and soft. I need to up the heat a bit because I'm just about to add in the rice. It's a fistful per person, basically. The rice wants me, but I am playing hard to get because what I want to do is I want every single one of these tiny little grains to heat all the way through and seal on the inside because that's what's going to stop it from turning into mush. In an Italian restaurant worthy of its name, on the menu next to the word risotto, whatever kind of risotto it happens to be, will be in brackets 25 minutes. That means that it's going to take 25 minutes to make your risotto for you. And here's a tip for you. If you're in a sort of Italian polite society or in a, one of those sort of meetings where, you know, the outcome of this meeting will determine whether or not you get the keys to the villa or keys to the Ferrari or, you know, whatever. If you're the one that orders the risotto, it's a good idea to turn to your fellow diners and say, does anybody mind if I order the risotto? And you'll be able to gauge how the, how the meal is going by their response. If they're a bit not happy about it then you know I'd be starting to worry but normally because they're Italian they'll all say oh yeah sure let's all have some and then you know everything's completely fine. The rice should be sufficiently hot and bothered by now and desperate for me to add the fluid. When I do bring in the first ladleful of stock it's going to sigh with relief. Il sospiro. There you go. And a column of steam is what you're looking for. And you keep stirring now and thinking beautiful thoughts. 
whilst you let this absorb the liquid. And the rice will tell me when it wants more liquid because at a certain point I'm going to draw my spoon through the risotto and there will be a clear wake opening up behind me like the parting of the Red Sea. So the rice is ready for more. And then you start again. In goes the saffron tea. They should start to take on that lovely golden hue now. And I think once it's absorbed this little bit, it should be ready to finish off. I'm going to taste to make sure that the risotto itself is cooked. Perfect. So now, the final ingredients. Another little bit of butter, and I'm going to grate in my parmigiano reggiano. So always grate it really fine so that it melts like dust to finish off your risotto really well. Now this final part of the process is called la mantecatura, mantecare. So basically what this means is that you're buttering it up. You're buttering up the risotto. The butter melted all the way through and you're making it super creamy. So once the butter has melted, you take it off the heat and you put a lid on top and you put it away to rest. So, after the risotto has had its four minutes of resting time, not three, not five, four, uh, you give it one last stir to really make it as creamy as you possibly can. And now this is ready to serve. With or without your osobuco, this is how to create a really perfect risotto. Buon appetito!